Hey, what's up? It's Adele Sines from MimicMethod.com, where you learn foreign languages by ear. Uh, in today's video, we're going to speak about the four major breakthroughs and four major what I call shifts that are necessary for you to achieve conversational fluency in a language. But I'm just going to jump in for now. Um, recently on our blog, and I'll put the link up soon, we released a post about one of our team members, Mike Gaeta, learning Italian. He learned Italian very quickly, and you can see video evidence of him having conversations in Italian nice and fluidly. And we talk about the four major breakthroughs he had to go through to reach that. First, he had a breakthrough in his hearing. Then he had a breakthrough in his pronunciation. Then he had a breakthrough in his understanding, comprehension. And then finally, he had a breakthrough in his speaking. So uh, I want to talk about each of these four breakthroughs. But first, I want to talk about, you know, zoom up top level. Why are you learning your foreign language? What is the purpose of it? Is your purpose to write essays, write emails, and read newspapers? Or what I think it would be, more likely, is your purpose is to have conversations with real human beings, native speakers of that language, right? However, having conversations for anyone watching who has any experience in learning a language will say sucks. Having conversations in a foreign language you're learning sucks. It's nerve-wracking, it's uncomfortable, it's, it's the worst, right? When you're not good at a language, you try to have a conversation with it, it sucks. I'll give you two scenarios to illustrate the suckiness of having a conversation in a foreign language. Um, first, imagine you're sitting with a group of people in a different country and they're all speaking this language you're trying to learn, but they're speaking very quickly and you have no idea what's going on. And they're all sitting there like, <laughs> right? And they're just having this great grand old time, but you're left out. You have no idea what's going on and no one likes to be the odd person out, right? That sucks. And the reason why it sucks is because you can't understand. Uh, but what sucks even more is when the attention turns to you. And they're like, <laughs> and then you're like, oh crap, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, let me try to say something. And then you try to get the words out. Now this whole time people are talking, there's a natural flow and rhythm of the language, everyone's having a good time. And then it comes to you and it's like a car coming to a screeching call. Like, ah, 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 ah. And then you're like, uh, uh, or whatever the language is, you, you stutter, you stumble, uh, you use awkward words. Your accent sounds so different. There's no musicality to the way you speak. And you're just a sore thumb sticking out in the whole conversation. And of course, people might be patient and they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, he's, he's learning. But really deep down, you know, you kind of messed up the flow. And it is what it is. Like you, people are having great conversation and the one guy comes in and you're like, ah, we have to slow it down for him or her. Or uh, we have to kind of pay attention and make sense of their accent. And if you've ever been in that situation, I know you know that this sucks. It's a sucky situation to be in. So that's why in the Mimic Method, we don't focus so much on all these standardized tests and these different frameworks of uh, C and T and B1 and C1. You know, that stuff has usefulness to it. However, I focus more on the emotional element and thinking, when can I get to this point in a language where it no longer sucks to have a conversation? How can I be sitting around with a group of people in Brazil or China or Germany or whatever, speaking their language, having a conversation, and feel a part of it, feel like I'm not slowing it down, feel like uh, I'm an actual contributor and I can express myself and be understood, crack jokes, when I can be myself, I can be Idalsanes in this other language. When I get to that point, it no longer sucks. It goes from being sucky to being fun. Because now I'm opened up, I'm learning faster, I'm part of the crew, people like me, I like people, and it's a great time. So for me, language you know, is a hard thing to learn, so it's all about the motivation. I want to accelerate that shift, that tipping point, that breakthrough point, as quickly as possible. And a couple of months ago, Mike Gaeta, who's with us right now, he made an attempt to uh, do this in Italian as quickly as possible. Once again, check the link, and you can see for yourself how he's able to perform. We made lots of videos so you can see his progress. I encourage you to check those out. And you'll see that he's reached the shift. He's at that point where Italian conversations no longer sucks. And now he's up on that hockey stick curve going and each time he has a conversation, he can connect with people, learn new words, uh, learn new cultural aspects of Italy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I wanna talk now about the steps that Mike had to go through 
and the four sub breakthroughs, sub shifts that Mike had to experience before he got to that. Uh, first sub shift is in hearing. Okay, so the biggest differentiator between the Mimic Method and all the other programs out there is our focus on hearing and pronunciation. Because back to that scenario, when you're sitting there and everyone's talking and you have no idea what's going on, there's only two reasons why. Reason number one, which is what people focus on, is maybe you just don't know the words, you don't know the context, you don't know what things mean, right? However, a lot of people study a language for a long time. They study lots of vocabulary lists, they do all the Duolingo apps, all the Rosetta Stones, read all the books, and they actually have a very deep, extensive knowledge of vocabulary and the language they can read very well. However, it doesn't, for some reason, translate to conversation. They have all these words in their head that they recognize on paper, but they can't recognize them in conversation. It's either too fast or they mix the words together. They can't hear the words. So in order for you to understand a language, you first need to be able to hear it. You need to be able to parse the word boundaries. You need to be able to tap into the rhythm and intonation to feel those things and then instantly make that connection between the sounds you're hearing and the words and the meanings you're trying to make sense of. And this ability of hearing is what we train in our courses, what we train in our program. Hearing is its own separate skill that needs to be focused on. Now, with enough exposure to the language, if you just passively expose yourself to a language for you know, a very, very, very long time, you will eventually slowly make this breakthrough in hearing. However, there's a way you can rapidly accelerate towards it in a matter of weeks. And that's exactly what we do in the Mimic Method. And so that's exactly what Mike did with Italian. And then you can read in our post how he did that, but a quick summary, what he did was he got uh, Italian speech and Italian music, used technology to slow it down, listen to it very closely. Then he understood and learned what the elemental sounds of Italian are. These are all the sounds that make up Italian. I don't remember how many there were, but it's you know probably around 30 something sounds. He learned what each one was. He pinpointed which elemental sounds he struggled to differentiate, to make sense of. He focused his attention on those sounds until he got them. And then he listened to these recordings, transcribed them. And then the way that Mike described it is that one day after doing this for a while, um, after doing it for like a week actually, he woke up and it was like being in the matrix. He listened to Italian, the same Italian he'd listened to the whole past you know, week. And all of a sudden it was in slow motion. He had more time to kind of hear and tune into the different word boundaries. So he'll have an experience where you, you hear a word and you don't know what that word means, but you know it's a word. Compare that to me talking right now, if I'm speaking the gibberish language like You don't know where the word boundaries are. And that's how foreign languages sound to you before you learn hearing. So the first breakthrough that Mike had was in hearing. And that is what allowed him to parse the words and once he learned what they mean, then he can understand Italians when they speak fast, right? Second breakthrough he had was in pronunciation. Now, as he's studying and hearing all these sounds, there's still a little bit of a delay before he can recreate these sounds himself. And first he has to recreate them individually, once again, looking at the elemental sounds of Italian and learning how to pronounce each one using our techniques, using our understanding of phonetics, which we teach in our courses. He, he learned how to use his mouth to create the individual Italian sounds. Then he looked at the most commonly used Italian words, which you can look up uh, on Wiktionary or just Google search frequency words in um, whatever your target language is and they give you a top 500, top 1000 most commonly used words, the words you're going to hear all the time. And then he made sure that he can pronounce each of them perfectly. He used me and an Italian teacher uh, to record himself, send it, and then pinpoint the sounds that he was mispronouncing, did that kind of training, focused, until eventually these sounds were able to roll off of his tongue much easier. And then the final piece of that is Italian, aside from the sounds, the elemental sounds combining together, you also have the rhythm, the intonation, the cadence, that he studied as well through music and just mimicking speech patterns. Once again, starting off very slow, slow sentences and building it up. Eventually he gets to the breakthrough in pronunciation. So to recap, he can hear Italian very quickly and you know, if someone's speaking very quickly or marbled, he can hear the sounds and then he can pronounce those sounds as well. And these two abilities combine the ability to mimic. This is why it's called the mimic method, because the way that you learn a foreign language 
is by listening to people and mimicking the sounds they make in order to express the meanings that they're expressing. Mimic, right? So Mike learned the ability to mimic in Italian before he knew what any of these words meant, really. Before he knew grammar, before he knew any of these structures, how to write, he was illiterate. All these things that everyone else jumped straight into when they learned a foreign language with all the other programs. Mike didn't do those things. He got the fundamental breakthroughs of hearing and pronunciation, unblocking his ears and unblocking his mouth. Now, he moves on to the more difficult breakthroughs to reach. The first one being in comprehension and understanding. So the way he did that is he first dove, um, he first, well, two things. He did Pimsleur, the program I recommend to people for um, building up your scaffolding, building up the basic understanding of what things mean. Pimsleur is a program you can look up online, P-I-M-S-L-E-U-R, where this guy will kind of say, like, you walk into a cafe and a woman says to you, Hola, como estas? Whatever, then the person, like a native speaker says something, and it's up to you to listen and mimic. Now, the main criticism people have of Pimsleur is that they have a hard time hearing and they have a hard time learning it by ear without seeing it written down. This is because they didn't do enough necessary training in hearing and pronunciation. Mike already did this, so Italian Pimsleur was much easier for him. He would do these lessons, take walks around the block and listen. Through that process, build up his basic vocabulary, his basic ability to express himself, and then immediately jumped into italki.com, I-T-A-L-K-I.com, where you can have conversations for free or paid with native speaker Italians. At first, it was very tricky. Uh, you can see that on some of our blog posts in the past. Just go through our blog, you can see the first time he had a conversation, and it was very tricky for him to like kind of follow along and express himself. It sucked, as you say. But you gotta break the ice as soon as possible. So many people waste countless months studying textbooks and you know, smartphone application before they have their first conversation. You gotta do it as soon as possible, as soon as you have hearing and pronunciation. Mike did that, he did the Pimsleur, and through that, and then also combining that with just listening to lots of podcasts, movies, and videos, and you know, learning words through Pimsleur, eventually his understanding started to pick up, right? And this part takes a lot longer. You know, you start to understand certain words, and then you can kind of get the gist, but not really, because you're missing some critical pieces. But over time, listening and mimicking over and over and over again, you eventually hit that third breakthrough, that third shift where you understand 80% of what people are saying. You understand enough to follow along in that conversation. So going back to that scenario I, I illustrated before, you're sitting around with a group of people and they're all like, blah, 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 blah. Now you can hear them and now you can understand enough. When they all laugh at the joke, you can laugh at the joke too. And you can feel a part of the group. And that's the, that's the third breakthrough understanding now for the final one, this final breakthrough is speaking is the hardest one to attain. Um, however, it's the holy grail and you just have to keep sprinting towards it. And this is the breakthrough in speaking, being able to express yourself, express your thoughts, ideas, and emotions. When you're in that scenario and everyone's talking, you can follow along and you, you're going to feel a strong urge to join in. Someone's going to say something funny, you can have your own joke, be like, ah, oh, shit, how do I say this? Uh, you know, the timing's gone, you missed the opportunity and you wanna have the confidence to speak, all right? And pronunciation, once again, is absolutely critical to this because pronunciation has two things. A, when you know the words you're saying sound nice and they sound the way they sound the native speakers, you have way less fear of speaking. If you know you sound with a really strong accent, that will affect your confidence and your ability to speak. Uh, but beyond that, words flow out of your mouth in a certain way through mimicking people and if you're doing different pronunciation, you won't be able to make it flow. And if you can't make it flow, it won't be fast, it won't be fluid, and sometimes it won't even be understandable by people. So once again, it's a little, remember, pronunciation comes first. But in the speaking thing, the way that Mike did it is first and foremost, having as many conversations as possible, speaking every day with people on italki. If you have the good fortune of being in the country, take advantage of having conversations without worrying about having perfect grammar, just focus on being understood and expressing yourself. And then um, the other piece, which you can read about in a couple blog posts back, was script training. What he would do is he would write out these scripts of conversations that he would have all the time, such as, you know, who am I? My name is Mike, I'm from the US, I work for this company, and I'm traveling to Italy for a few weeks, blah, 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 blah. These conversations you know you always have in when you meet people, when you travel, um, you do it in English or whatever your t first language is all the time, you need to write these things out, get them translated, 
and then commit them to memory. You want to memorize them the same way a comedian memorizes his uh, routines, right? Now, what happens when you do this is now you get into a conversation, you meet someone, and you're like, ah, you can speak the language um, and give a very strong first impression. People hear you, and they're like, oh, wow, this guy knows his stuff. And then they start swirling off into other conversations. You won't be as comfortable in those other spontaneous conversations. However, you'll have given a good first impression. The person will want to speak with you. They'll bring you into the conversation. And we, we talk about this in our video. It's sink or swim at that point. You want to be in the deep end of language learning, in the deep sea water, and just trying to figure things out for yourself. The first several times you do that, you're going to be lost. You're not going to be able to express yourself in spontaneous conversation. But it's just a question of clocking time. If you do it over and over and over again, you'll start to notice patterns. You'll start to uh, learn new words through mimicry. You'll hit a critical mass of knowledge, of understanding of the language and ability and practice where you finally get that final breakthrough in speaking. And here's what it looks like. You're sitting around with that group of people. They're all talking. You understand them. You join the conversation. When it's your turn to speak, you say something. You crack a joke. You express your thoughts. It won't be perfectly grammatical, but it'll be understandable. It won't break the flow of the conversation. People will appreciate you. You'll be able to make friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, professional relationships, all these things that we want. This is why we learn language. And it will no longer suck because now you can finally connect with the other human beings in that culture. And from there on, there's more to our method in terms of increasing your grammaticality, increasing your sophistication and eloquence in your speech. And most of that comes through reading and writing and um, studying things a bit more you know, in depth. However, we don't get to any of that stuff until it stops sucking, until we get that shift, that major breakthrough, that major tipping point, critical mass in our conversational ability. This is the holy grail what everyone wants, what they're looking for. And um, yeah, so those are the four major breakthroughs that lead to what we call the shift. And if you're learning a foreign language, put away your books, put away your smartphone apps, follow this method, and concentrate all your efforts to getting to that shift as quickly as possible. Because once it stops sucking, then there's way, the, the, the amount of resistance you have when it comes to going out and meeting people reduces dramatically. Because now you want to talk all the time. It's fun. And then, you, as we all know, you get better and better through more practice. Secondly, the shift, I like to think of um, Mario. If you played Mario on Super Nintendo back in the day, and you had these checkpoints, you have a level that's like this long, but then halfway through it, you reach a checkpoint, and then that way if you get killed by a Goomba or like a turtle, then instead of going to back to the beginning of the level, you go back to that checkpoint. When you reach this stage in conversation, the shift in learning a foreign language, if you move on to learn a different language, or maybe you leave the country, you don't have as many opportunities to speak, and you go a long time without speaking the language, you won't lose it. If you do that before you reach the shift, there's a very high chance you'll just lose all the effort and the work you did. You'd be like Mario going back to stage one. You come back to China or Germany to learn the language. Like, oh shit, like, I know I already learned this, but um, I forgot, you know? That's what everyone who's, who's done Spanish or French in high school, is, that's what it feels like. You know, you, you go and learn and all that hours you spent back in the day are, are basically wasted. But if you reach this shift in conversation, then when you go back, you can reactivate it very quickly. So it really is the most important thing for you as a new beginner, new language learner, anyone who's behind the shift, if conversation still sucks for you, you need to get to this point as quickly as possible. And once again, the order is focus on hearing, get that first breakthrough, then second breakthrough, pronunciation, then comprehension and understanding, and then finally speaking. Uh, so that's what I got for you guys today. But until next time, thanks for watching and good luck reaching these four breakthroughs in your foreign language.